नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स लेट अस टॉक अबाउट एलवीडीएस एंड एमएलवीडीएस सो एलवीडीएस इज नथिंग बट लो वोल्टेज डिफरेंशियल सिग्नल एंड एमएलवीडीएस इज मल्टी पॉइंट लो वोल्टेज डिफरेंशियल सिग्नल ओके सो यू वुड यू वुड हैव सीन मेनी ऑफ द प्लेसेस लाइक वी हैव वन क्लॉक सोर्स हियर एंड दैट इज गोइंग टू गो थ्रू अ एलवीडीएस ट्रांसीवर लेट्स से ड्राइवर एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू गिव यू आउटपुट एज डी प्लस डी माइनस and then then again will be working with one lvds receiver and that will again convert it to my required clock source okay so you can see one of the clock source that is coming in and lvds driver signal is converting it into differential form why do we convert it to differential form that is a very you know like long story because it is going to have lot of noise immunity and it can have a capability of transmitting the signal at very longer distance and in fpg applications and all you have lot of clock sources where you will be requiring lvds signal at all okay so this particular session i have taken reference from analog devices uh, resource so there is application note that has been given by one of the best engineer and i have tried taking all the informations from there so what we will do is we will try to understand what is lvds and what is mlvds and how it can be utilized in your clock source distribution as well as differential line driver and receivers so basically there are two things one is driver so driver will be receiving one input as a clock source or maybe any a uh, pulse signal and that will be converted to your d out plus and d out minus which will be in differential form and why do we do that is to avoid lot of noise sources or something like that and at the same time there will be one receiver this receiver will convert the particular coming differential signal to again a signal uh, of clock source or whatever the pulse signal that is there so we will be talking about lvds driver and then lvds receiver okay so first of all we will try to understand the concepts of lvds and mlvds and what are the advantage disadvantage and all those things and then we'll see some of the ic applications where you can utilize this so that you can have a complete understanding about schematic design in your fpga system or maybe dsp processors or something like that okay so let us talk about lvds so lvds is a low power alternative to emitter coupled logic okay or positive emitter coupled logic so it is basically very widely utilized for your high speed back plane okay cable and board to board data transmission and clock distribution as well as communication link within a single pc so what happens is basically very high speed you know like a clock distribution or maybe a communication link within a single pcb you need it, you need then you will be utilizing lvds what are the some advantages is it can communicate at a speed of up to 1 gbps or even more it has very reduced electromagnetic emissions it has very good increased immunity to noise the best thing it it has very low power operation okay so very low power consumption will be there and at the same time common mode range allowing differences up to plus minus 1 volt in the ground offset is there okay so basically it can go up to plus minus 1 volt up and down talking about mlvds so mlvds is nothing but lvds only but it has multi point so multi point low voltage differential signaling so which is going to extend your lvds to address multi point applications basically many applications are there what is the additional feature of mlvds is it is increased driver output strength means it it will have lot of fan out like one driver output can give you you know like a different different uh, Uh, signaling output okay so one uh, let's say some more places you can do one more like that you can take out okay then it has controlled transmission times it has extended common mode range it has option for fail safe receiver for bus idle condition like if bus is ideal and it is not working at that time if there is a failure or something it has a fail safe uh, options if you talk about applications of lvds then it has bus type and topologies applications then it has clock distribution applications so mainly i have been utilizing lot of lvds in clock distribution application only in my fpga circuits okay then we have characteristics of lvds signaling 
then we have termination and pcb layout a lot of termination are required so that you don't have a uh, you know like noise issues or maybe uh, signal coupling issues or something like that we want to avoid jitter and skews uh, in pulses so that also places lvds are utilized then data encoding and synchronization as well as lot of places there will be a requirement of isolation of signaling at that place lvds are utilized so lot of uh, you know like uh, isolation lvds are also available let us simply talk about little bit of communication categories that are available with us so we have lot of communication standards you can see we have mlvds we have rs45 we have can so uh, you can see mlvds is low power high speed up to uh, 100 mbps or something like that it can go very easily mlvds is uh, sorry rs485 is uh, you know like very long distance but it has very low data rate up to around 16 mbps then if you see can protocol that is basically utilized in your automotive application so it has also a very less distance around 40 meters of application but data rate is even lesser than rs485 that is just 1 mbps okay if you talk about point to point then we have lvds and pecl that is uh, i mean uh, emitter coupled positive emitter coupled logic so we have lvds 5 meter to 10 meters and data rate is very very high which is going to be 1 gbps right for positive emitter coupled logic we have even higher data rate which is up to uh, 3 gbps but very short distance that will be now let us get into the block diagrams and the applications and you know like operations of lvds so if you see lvds point to point link we have a data in let's say we have a clock source or maybe data signal that is coming in terms of pulse so that will get converted to your d plus output and d minus output so basically it will be positive negative and like this it will be converted okay then there will be a receiver so we will be utilizing receiver this is nothing but a termination resistor which is actually utilized for uh, matching the data line so you must consider that this is a particular line and this particular line must be matching like let's say z node must be matching with your this rt node right rt now receiver will be converting this particular differential signal to again actual signal which is there at the end right so this is how you will be getting your required signal uh, since i have taken it from uh, <coughs> analog device application node so there are a lot of part number that has been given for number of transmitters and receiver transmitter is nothing but your driver and receiver is nothing but your rx okay so if you want to utilize uh, adn 4661 you can go ahead with uh, only one driver is there just like this if you utilize dn the adn 4662 then you can go for uh, one uh, receiver so this is how it is working similar to that other parts are there which you can go through by yourself coming back to multi point so what happens is this lvds can have multi drop buses also so let's say one lvds driver is there now what is going to happen is instead of having one lvds receiver we can have three lvds receiver okay so what happens is multi drop point so one bus is going to go here then one more bus is going to go here then one more bus will be going to go here okay so this is how you are going to receive three outputs so one signal like one clock source can get converted into three outputs okay so this is how you are going to have a clock distribution kind of thing okay and in this uh, this will be actually in terms of uh, like differential form that you already know right so this is how it will be Coming back to uh, MLVDS, so MLVDS, half duplex, full duplex, we will understand like what is half duplex and full duplex, but first we will understand what is it, right? So what is going to happen is MLVDS transceivers means it is going to have driver and receiver, both are together or DR I can write it as TX, okay, transmitter and receiver. So DIN is coming and then it is going to get converted to your differential signal and then it is going to go to your receiver so the purple color is or pink color is your receiver and the bluish color is your driver okay 
Now what is happening is half duplex what happens is there is only one bus that is there. So what happens is let us say driver is working so only driver signal will be working and it will be driving so at that time only receiver will be receiving the signals okay. Let us say this driver has to work then what will happen is again if this will start working at, at that time all the receiver will be receiving the signal right. Similar to that if another driver has to send the signal then other driver will be keeping quiet and at that time bus will be utilized for that one okay. So this is how half duplex. Full duplex means let's talk about full duplex. So full duplex will be having two you know like buses. One will be for driver signal, another one will be for receiver signal and both can work at a time. So you can see driver signal, let us say we have one clock source that is going, let us say we have one clock source that is going into this. So this bus will be utilizing that one uh, to convert it into, it into uh, like let us say uh, we have differential signal and then it will go and go into your receiver output. So this one will be there, this one will be there, this one will be there like that they will be taken out. Similar to that let us say this is the uh, driver that is sending the signal. So this bus will be utilized and this bus will be sending the signal to your receiver. So this will be sending to receiver output or this receiver output or this receiver output. So like that it will be so that's how both of the buses will be utilized together at that at that place it is called as full duplex. There are n number of LVDS or M like MLVDS that is multi point uh, low voltage differential signaling. So you can see we have half duplex type, we have full duplex type, we have number of receiver and number of you know like transmitters both are there. Okay. Now let us talk about clock distribution applications. So since I told you just now, I think just now you had seen as well, like we have one clock source here, okay, and this LVDS clock source will be converting it, in, it into differential signal D plus D minus and then three clocks you will be receiving. So this is how you are distributing your signal, uh, one single clock to your one, two and three. So this is how three clock sources you are getting three different purposes you can utilize in your let us say FPGA circuit where you have different applications. So this is how uh, multi drop LVDS are very very useful for your clock distribution application. If you talk about output label so what happens is let us say uh, we have V output plus and V output minus like uh, D out plus and D out minus you saw right. So this is how D out plus and D out minus is going to work on. So let us say logic 1 means V output plus will be high and uh, logic 0 means V output plus will be low for logic 1 okay and for logic 0 it will be low and the green is actually D out minus so that will be high. So if negative is high it means logic 0 and if positive is high means it is logic 1 okay and you can see uh, since it is differential so uh, the difference will be from between this to this so it can be like 1.2 okay like let us say 1.35 volt minus 1.05 volt so the difference will be 1.2 volt so you don't have to consider uh, like differential signal will be you know like uh, having no reference like it will it will not it, it should not be considered through ground like it can be considered difference of these two signals okay now what will be your outputs so output is nothing but your v output plus minus V output minus. So see what is going to happen. You can see uh, this uh, positive output and negative right. So if you see this negative like uh, 1.05 minus 1.35 so minus 0.3 so minus 0.3 volt you are getting. So this will be your negative clock and this will be your positive clock. If you see here it is going to be 1.35 minus 1.05 that is 0.3. So this is how the output will be received. So input was same, same way output was also same. If you want you can have lower logic level or lower uh, voltage level shifting as well. If you talk about driver and receiver, so this is how we have been explaining you. Like let us say we have ADN 4663 which has two drivers and ADN 4664 which has two receivers. 
so we have two signal that is going into the data in one data in two and we have two differential signal outputs that is data in one data out plus one and data out one minus and this data out two plus and data out two minus and these two can be uh, sent to your receivers and this receiver will be giving you the output r out one and r out two similar to this data in okay so data in will be going to data out by utilizing your two LVDS, one is your driver, one is your receiver, okay? So that's all about, about all these things. Now, now let's talk about, you know, like how point-to-point -point termination actually occurs. So as I have been telling you, this is my LVDS driver. This is my LVDS receiver. So there is a termination resistor that you are using, let us say 100 ohm, or sometimes it is used as 50 ohm. So it will be mentioned in the data sheet of your LVDS uh, driver or receiver okay so what happens is this is the trace that you have to manage okay so this trace must be matching to your rt so which must be z0 is equal to rt okay so it means z0 must be equal to rt which is going to termination matches cab cable trace or impedance okay so cable trace impedance must be matched with your termination resistor otherwise there will be you know like a lot of fluctuations or you know like noise uh, immunity will not be uh, uh, I mean achieved. Now let us talk about little bit of isolation as I have been talking to you. So if you talk about isolation, let us say we have power supply here. So we have let's say input 1, input 2. So these input signal or these input clock can go and this is isolated uh, LVDS driver or let's say isolation barrier. And this isolation barrier is sending the data out in same fashion like in one in two has been going to yes you know, like output here now this is going to go as a data input to your lvds driver so lvds driver will be sending the signal into your differential pipe okay so it, this will be positive negative logic that will be going and similar to that in two has also been you know like sent to your data output in differential pipe so first you have isolation barrier then you send to your LVDS driver. Understood? Similar to that, this signal which is differential form can be sent back to or let's say sent to your receiver. So receiver will be receiving the differential form input and then it will be converting into your R out one which will be a single uh, you know like signal and this signal will be sent to your out one output. So this is how FPGA has sent the clock source and then received the clock source or feedback, something like this. Alright, so hope you have a good understanding about what are the different levels of, you know, like LVDS and how LVDS actually works. So what we will do is, in our next session, we will try to understand different, you know, like ICs for, for LVDS signaling and we will try to understand how it works, okay. So we'll take two examples. One will be like ADN 4661 driver and one will be ADN 4662 receiver. And both of their application circuits you will see so that we can have a particular understanding and a industrial environment knowledge of how to put these particular things in your circuit designs. So hope you have a good understanding now. Please put out your queries and comments in the comment box so that we can give you uh, answers if there is any. Right? Thank you.